Hi, this is AAP.net Cross MVC. Learn and practice cross. Today in this lesson, we will work with the validation for the form. Let's get started. Open Visual Studio. And this is the contact form. Before we do the validation, let me run this form on the browser. Go to the contact form. And then this is the blank data form. Let's go ahead to click on Simulton. And then you see that the user is able to left all the components on the form in blank. And then they submit the data to the server. After we submit the blank form to the server, we can get the null values for all of the property in the form. In this today lesson, to prevent submitting the blank form data to the server, so we have to do the validation to make sure everything is okay before we submit it to the server. Let's come back to the Visual Studio and then open the contact model. We have to define some the annotation in the uh, for the form here. Let me do add some the annotation attribute to this data model. For the name, the name it should be required. And we have required. Yeah. And then we need to add some the reference libraries for the required. Or using the system dot components model dot data annotations. Yeah. The name is required. Let me copy it. The email it should be required. Phone required. Address required. Not also required. Okay. And then open the home controller. In the entity pod contact form here, we have to do some validation here. We need to check the if the model state is valid. So when we receive the data from the submit form from the user via the form data here, we need to make sure the data model is valid. In this case, if the model state of the submitted form data from the current side is invalid, so we will return the view with the form data here. And then back to the contact view. In the contact view, the previous lesson, we already created the contact form by using a template. So here, when using the template, it will automatically generate the field for our contact form. Basically here, in order to do some of the validation, we have the div ASP validation summary model only. This one. And then for some specific property here, like ID, name, email, and other property in the form, we have the ASP validation form. And then the name of property. Here we have ID, name, email, phone, address, and note. Let me come back to the browser. Refresh this one. So now, let everything is blank, and then I will try to submit this form. You see, for now, after we apply the validation message, we cannot submit this form because we have some the required field for on this form still is blank. So let me complete something here. Fill some data into this form. Name is Chien Fu. Email address. Let me click on the career button. And you see that for any required field. If we already fill in the data, so the red message here will be disappear. That they disappear as well. 
and for the ID, it's invalid for now. Let me enter the one and click on submit button. And then you can see the return JSON with the information we have just entered here. Okay. Okay. So, for example, for the ID, if I just want to allow the user to enter some the number around from 1 to 10, so how to limit it? Just back to the contact. For the ID, I will have a range and the minimum is 1 and the maximum will be 10. Yeah. That means if the user enters the values outside the range from 1 to 10, so it would be displaying the error message. The same thing for the name. For example, I just want to allow the user to enter the length of the name in around the uh, 50 character. So I will have the string length. It will be the uh, 50 for the email. It will be require some the email format email address and for the phone it will be require the phone number format for the note i will limit the length on string length it will be around 250 character okay let me come back to browser and refresh this one Submit the validation message in REST will be appear. Let me enter some value here. Submit. And you see here for the ID, because we don't want to limit the ID from the 1 to 10. So we enter the value 555 inside it 1. So it will be display the error message. We said that we are able to enter the value for this field from 1 to 10. Let me double check. So after we en enter the valid value into the ID field here, the error message will be disappear. The same thing for the phone number. For the note, that thing. For the name, actually you cannot enter. Yeah, it's a read around 50 characters, so we cannot enter another character into this one. Okay, click on submit button. Two. That's all for today. And after you finish this lesson, you know how to do some of the validation for our form in the FB.net core MVC. I hope this lesson will have fun for you. See you in the next lesson. Bye bye.